Right, so in this video I'm going to talk about the idea that sometimes you'll get recursive formulas and if you don't know what a recursive formula is, you don't know anything about sequences, this is not the video to start with. It's if you understand basically how a recursive formula works. I'll go into some explanation but not super deep. I just want to explain the difference between like if you have a formula that starts out with this or if you have a formula that starts out with this. Because a lot of times it's the same thing really, it's just a different way of looking at it, but a lot of times you get questions that want you to do it from a sub n plus 1. So let's talk about recursive formulas for just a second. It's a quick review hopefully for people. The idea of a recursive formula is you're just trying to figure out what happens over and over again. What's the recur reoccurrence, I guess, is a, a big way to go about it. What, what change is happening over and over again each time to make it happen? I know for a fact because I used infinite algebra, which is a great program if you're a teacher. Um, so if you're happen to be a teacher and you hear this, there's a little plug for them. Anyway, um, I set it up as an arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic sequence, which is what I usually say. But uh, the reality is something's going to happen over and over and over again to make this sequence work. That's the part I want to know for a recursive formula. An explicit formula, and I've got other stuff on that, and many people have tons of stuff on explicit formulas, works in a different way. An explicit formula can get you directly from the number that you want to know, the number of the term, to its value. So if I'm doing something with $5 bills, for instance, if I have five $5 bills, I have $25. Well, an explicit formula for that would be if I want to know the value of five $5 bills or whatever it happens to be, I would just do five times the number of $5 bills that I happen to have. So uh, a sub 5 equals 25. So this would be an explicit formula. It can take me directly from one to the other. A recursive formula, on the other hand, can't do anything except tell me if I have one term, I can find the next term, or what I have to do to find the next term. Or if I know the number in front of the term I want to know, and I know how I'm supposed to change it, I can tell what that term's value is. And that's the two perspectives you're working on. So one perspective is from a sub n, and one's from a sub n plus 1. So let's just take a second to get the idea of the difference between these two things. Uh, if I have these formulas, I or this sequence here, this is my first term, this is my second term, this is my third term, this is my fourth term. So I want to know, okay, if I keep going up, or even if I use these, n would be essentially any term. It just you know, it almost is one letter away from that. But n just means the number of the term. So these are my n values here. If I want to pick just some theoretical one, it could be the 200th term, it could be the millionth term, it could be the fifth term. I just want to have it for all possibilities. I will call that term that my focus is on a minus n. So my a sub n, one of them could potentially be the third term. It could be any of the terms, but I'm just going to circle three as a, a point in time. So we'll call this the n term that we're focused on right now. The term that comes after it, I don't want to say, okay, what's the a sub three? I want to know what a sub four is, but another way to write a sub four would be a sub three plus one. So the term that happens to be in front of the term I'm focused on, I will call a sub n plus one. So if you're, you're doing your number, if this is the 75th term, this would be the 76th term, because it's 75 plus 1. If I want to reference the position of the one in front of it, I'd say that the ace of 2 value would be negative 10. I might also call this the ace of 3 minus 1, because that would give me the ace of 2 that I'm looking for. So ace of n minus 1 refers to the value that really the ace of 4 is this, the ace of 3 is this, and the ace of 2 is this, because it's the actual values in the sequence. But it's just about position and time. If this is the 75th term, this is the 76th term, this is the 74th term. But the thing about ace of n is it could be anything. If this is the 200th term, 201, 199. Millionth term, millionth 1, 999,999th nine term, or the value of those terms. So. Consider that as an issue. That's really what that all, all that means. Now, let's get to the making the recursive formula part. So I'm going to take a look to see if there's a common difference. That's 4. And make sure that you always start with a term and f like further into the sequence and then do your subtraction backwards. Don't forget your signs. 
negative 6 minus negative 10 is really negative 6 plus 10, so it's 4. And that makes sense, because the numbers in this sequence are going up. So plus 4, they're getting less negative all the time. Plus 4, plus 4, plus 4. That's my change part. So really, for me, the benefit is that I've already got the most important part of the recursive formula, which is what's happening over and over again. What's the re reoccurrence? Plus 4. So if I want to reference a sub n as my term, so if I want to know what a term is, I'm going to take the term in front of it. So if I want to know that it's negative 6 for a sub 3, I need to look at a sub 2, which is negative 10, so a sub n minus 1, and then add 4. That's it for recursive formula for that one. Uh, the other way I can look at it is if I already know a term, and I know that the reoccurrence is adding 4, I can find the next term. So you can write them in either, you know, you can write them either way. However you want, whatever is comfortable for you is what uh, you should do, unless you're forced to do it by some tests or whatever nonsense that you have to deal with. But the reality is, it's the same exact thing. It's just saying, if I know... So if I have a sub n minus 1, a sub n, and a sub n plus 1, it's just depending on perspective. This one starts right here and goes up to this one. So you start here, add 4, get this one. This one starts right here and goes up to this one. It's the same thing. It's just a different way of looking at it. You could probably do something with a sub n plus 2, which would be two terms ahead. You just have to change how you deal with the change component. So that's a, a consideration to make. I think I have something on geometric of the same style, so if I do, I'm going to get that one a go, and then I'm, you know, I'm done so. So, yeah, I need to find the recursive formula with the n plus 1 component. And the n plus 1 thing only happens in recursive formula. Explicit formula doesn't work like that, because the whole point of an explicit formula is it gets you to exactly the um, term that you want to know about. You don't want to know about the term after the one you want to know about. You want to know about the exact term. I want to know how much money I have if I have five $5 bills. Six $5 bills does not answer my question because I don't have that many. I only have five. So explicit formula, that's out the window. But for uh, recursive formula, you can have a sub n plus one. So in this case, I'm dealing with, okay, what's the change part? What's happening over and over again? This is what's happening over and over again. I have some stuff on how to get a feel for um, going from explicit to uh, recursive formulas. The easiest way to do it, and I should mention this, is just to make the sequence once you're given the formula. So the first term in the sequence, second term, third term, fourth term, the first term in the sequence would be negative 4 times 4, so 1 minus 1, so you end up with Dude, that's hideous looking. I mean, I've written some bad stuff and gone on, but that was just too hard to deal with. Anything to zero power is just one, so you get negative four. So that's the first term in sequence. And then really, you're just multiplying times four, so negative 16. And you can test it by doing negative four times four to the two minus one. See, this one's referencing the idea that you have to multiply by a number in a geometric sequence. So you actually just start with the first term in the sequence and then you eliminate the effect of the times for the first term by adding this n minus 1 component in. It's kind of smart. Anyway, I mean, of course it is. I mean, people invented this. They were geniuses. So of course it's smart. I don't know what I was thinking. Like I'm pushing some huge knowledge there. Anyway, so the next one would be uh, negative 4 times 4 raised up to the second power so you're really looking at negative 64, and then it would just be times 4 again, over and over again. But the key issue here is, there's the sequence, this part right here. Anyway, um, the bigger issue is that we have the change component. We have the part that we need. All we're really saying with a recursive formula is, what happens to the term? Well, times 4, right? So, and we have to give it a place to start, but a sub 1 is really easy to get here. The a sub 1 in this case would be negative 4 because it's geometric. So you do have to start out with that component. Um, the other side of it is 
Here's the change part. So I could say, all I want if I know a term, if I know the term in front of it, I'm just going to multiply that times 4. So if I want the third term here, I take the second term, multiply by 4. So there's that. If I want the ace of n plus 1 term, the ace of 1, the first part is still in play. And I, hopefully I mentioned it in the previous one, but if I didn't, I'm the worst. But you have to have some part of the sequence that continues forward or it doesn't make any sense. Like you have to have it starting out. You can multiply times 4 to a lot of things and get infinitely many sequences. So the reason that you give the ace of one term when you do a recursive formula is just to say like, hey, FYI, this is where it starts. So people aren't multiplying times 4 to any number they feel like in their heart is the right one. Um, anyway, this is the starting with a term in front of it times 4, or if I already know the term, I can just multiply that times 4 and it'll give me the next term. So that's the n plus 1 component of all this. And a little bonus feature I can just check. There you go. Ace of n times 4. Ace of 1 equals negative 4. So all that's hunky and dory. And uh, really, that's it. I mean, it's not as difficult, you know, as it would seem. And I should have mentioned, and hopefully I did, uh, the ace of 1 term in this case is really easy to write because they just tell you what it is. So ace of n, ace of n minus 1 plus 4 you always want to have that part in there and I realize now that I probably didn't put that there so sorry it happens sometimes but if I want the next term I'll take this term add 4 to it and guess what the ace of 1 term doesn't change because I have to have a starting point so no big deal there everything's all good to go but that's the big difference between the ace of n and the ace of n point plus 1 it's just a matter of perspective